MMA Meltdown on the Fight Network continues. I am Gabriel Morenci. Thanks to the young Punisher, Russell Doan, for joining us uh, on the program. And I thought that was pretty classy, uh, what he told us, the, the inside moment between him and Brimage while they were waiting for Buffer to read the scores, that uh, they both shook hands and they said, hey, whatever happens, we're good with it. Great fight, man. And uh, Doan said after, hey, you know, if it would have went the other way, I would not have complained. And I don't take that as... Oh, because he didn't win the fight. I know there was a lot of controversy, and that was one of the fights. And I don't think there was big controversy because Doan won the fight. I think there was controversy because uh, the Rosales uh, judge scored a 30-27, and clearly Brimage did win a round. I mean, you can't take that away from Brimage. But all in all, I think the right guy won the fight. And speaking of uh, numbers, we bring in the best number guy in combat sport, Joey Odessa. Uh, Joey, it's always a pleasure. Thanks for taking the time to be with us. How you doing? It's a pleasure. What's happening to you? Yeah, that sounds like he's, uh, you know, that's professional. I mean, that, that's how they're supposed to do it. These guys, you know, know lovey-dovey, fight it out when it's over, shake hands, and, uh, you know, that's the end of it. And it was a good fight. It was a good fight. You know, I, I know you like uh, Brimage, but there was no shame in that, Joey, and there was no shame in Brimage's performance. You know, Doan said, hey, Brimage landed a couple of real heavy kicks, and he hurt me uh, with those kicks. I thought they both fought a good fight. It was a damn close fight. It was a close fight. It could have went either way, but I think the takedowns were the difference for Doan. Yeah, I mean, these fights, you know, you don't know. Again, we don't know what these judges are watching sometimes. It's, what gets me is I don't mind the split decisions as much as the, the wide split decisions, but in the end, the scorecards, you know, the 30-27 one ways don't matter just because... Uh, you know, it's two cards to one. Yeah, and I see... It, it looks uh, awful on paper, but what are you going to do? I see some sports books uh, right now actually have point betting, uh, Joey, where you're betting the cards, and that's insanity. I'm a degenerate, and I like to play fantasy on counter move, and I like to lay it down for real in the real world, <laughs> but uh, I'm not going to start betting on total points, you know, because God knows. Well, Gabe, I actually... Uh, I. I'll take credit for inventing that back in uh, 2006. I really? posted it up on the sports wagering board. Absolutely, yeah, it's documented. So the yeah, so it's the, the, the so for for people who don't understand, boxing I've done it. Boxing I've done it. But MMA, it's a little bit different, so people understand. So you go to the scorecard, 30, 27, three points. You know, 29, 28, one point, et cetera. So you'll see, like, a fighter minus five and a half points, like Frankie Edgar was minus five and a half points uh, uh, during the fight against uh, B.J. Penn. So you, you invented that, huh, Bagels? Well, the reason we did it was uh, there were so many big favorites back in the mid-2000s, and guys that weren't laying the 11 and 12 to once. But if I would put up, like, a... 13 and a half, you know, minus a dollar 20, and any knockout wins, you know what I mean, or any stoppage yeah. wins, they would bet it, and it would be more enticing to the player. But then, you know, the other sports books picked it up, and it just became something, you know, I, we have so many bouts now that it's tough to keep up with, so I don't offer a lot of the props. Yeah, and it's just now it's almost like live wagering on soccer. It's a computer, you know, algorithm, uh, algorithm here. You're, you're, you're not betting against a real person. You're betting against against the computer. But uh, Joey was setting numbers, man, in the early days, all the way back to UFC 1. And, uh, Joey, there was a lot of talk about the monster number of Roger Rousey opening up at 16-1, to 18-1. to 1. Ended up closing at about 950. I put her in the parlays. And it actually paid off, like, uh, you know, knocked off 50 cents. But, man, this she's just so freaking dominant, yeah, isn't she, Joey? I mean, wait, what can you do? They got to get Holly Holm in here. They got to get Carano. They got to get Cyborg. They got to get somebody in there, Joey. Well, Dana said, he, you know, that he's, he's considering signing Christian, so Christine, so Cyborg. So I guess uh, we might have a shot at it. He said if people don't bug him, which will be great. I tell you what, Ronda looks awful impressive. I mean, 16 seconds out there. And uh, she was just vicious. I mean, I, I think Cyborg's got one chance to beat her, and that would be, uh, you know, by some sort of a knockout or something. But I still maintain that Ronda's the best female mixed martial artist out there. Uh, Joey, there's no cards this week. Well, we got a 1FC, but we'll, we'll ramp it up uh, next week. So uh, we'll be quick tonight. We only got a minute's left time here. But, you know, I had Anderson Silva both times, despite the fact people close to Weidman were telling us our boy Ailman was telling us, you guys are nuts. He's going to smash Silva. But there were weird circumstances in his wins. I don't want to hear anyone bitch about Weidman right now. This kid reminds me of George St. Pierre in his quietness and 
his his brilliance almost. The kid's just so so well rounded, man. Wyman's the real deal, Joey. People are talking about a Belfort fight. You know, Jackeray could potentially be interesting. We got to wrap it up here, but like in 30 seconds, uh, what do you got as far as Wyman? This kid's pretty damn good, Joey. I think Weidman beats either one of them. Um, unless, you know, again, you know, Weidman's only going to get beat if he gets caught. He showed some vulnerabilities, but he was injured. I mean, he came in with some injuries. He said he had the worst training camp that he's had in some time. I mean, you reflected upon that later in the week last week, and uh, which, which steered me a little bit towards Machida. And, uh, you know, think, again, if he, a, a healthy Weidman's capable of beating anybody in the division. I'm, you know, I'm saying he's the... I'm saying he's Kane because there's Kane, the JDS, and then everybody else. But right now, it's all Weidman. Joey Odessa will ramp it up uh, next week. We got Miller, we got Cerrone, uh, we got the uh, the hype machine that is Conor McGregor and Diego Brandao. Uh, so a ton of fights to break down uh, next week. Always a pleasure, my man. If you want more Odessa, he's with us every Tuesday night, Sirius XM Channel 167, uh, 10 o'clock Eastern, MMA Meltdown Radio. Always a pleasure, Joey. My pleasure, G. Have a good one. There's a Joey Odessa. Man, I feel like I'm on speed uh, today on this program. Quick, 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 quick. We come back with our videos of the week.